I can explain what we explain whatever I could to explain. Ladies, the rabbi is here. Please, everybody. And if you have a phone, make sure he doesn't ring. Thank you. I have contact. I have a I have contact. I have I have contact. I have contact. I have what broke of the metal leaves? Was that fruit? Uh, he has a fire of assignments here. Uh, no one knows the answer. We learned about it this summer. What's the question? Spray leaves. What broke do you make on the leaves? Good question. What? Yeah, but if you only have the grape leaf, what bracha do you make? Head on. What? Yeah. The tzaddik, I believe Yitzchak Abedichev, he wanted to go visit one of the big tzaddikim of his time, the uh, grandson of the Baal Shem Tev Reboruch. Uh, Reboruch was very, and I believe Yitzchak, from the way, you know, the stories we know, were like you know, very different personalities. You know, if they would both be, if they'd both be uh, categorized today, the way, you know, people get categorized, he would, he would be, he would be, uh, the Baruch would be put on antidepressants mm -hmm. and and uh, the Levi Yitzchak would be the other way, you know, like the uh, Levi Yitzchak could sometimes get so excited, they keep shooting, he would jump on the table. And, uh, and the Baruch was very, you know, was, was, he was, so, uh, the Levi Yitzchak knew that, uh, when uh, he's going to ask the Baruch for an invite, he couldn't just come. He wanted to spend the Shabbos with Reboruch that uh, that Reboruch might not uh, want to have him over. So um, <laughs> they were very different. Avoid this Hashem. So he sent him a message saying, "Look, I would love to be by you for Shabbos. I'm going to behave. I'm not. I'm. I'm just want to feel the Shabbos with you. I want to be with you for Shabbos. I want to be with you for Shabbos." So Reboruch said, "Okay, fine." That's the deal. He's going to behave. I believe Yitzchak is going to behave. So uh, it comes Shabbos, and uh, he take, He behaves. He behaves. He comes to the Suda. He's sitting in the Suda, and uh, the and the Baruch's house was everything was very organized. And there were waiters. They came out, and there were different. They had different types of fish on a on a platter. There was a big platter full of fish, and. Uh, and the waiter turned uh of a gast. So he asks, Terabliv Yitzchak, Velka fish gleichte. In Yiddish, Velka fish gleichte. Which fish do you like? And that was already, that was it. And Abliv Yitzchak threw his hands up. He said, Ich gleichte de Banishaloylam. And the fish went flying on all sides. <laughs> And uh, and one of the you know like to have the the fish to get filled the fish you can buy from Kedem or the Manashevitz the ones in the with the, the with the yoich with the yoich yeah. yeah so uh, that you know from the bone from the fish of the bone we spoke this morning about the gelatin so the uh, so they had they had the yoich the, the, and one of the and and a one big thing of that one flying on on the bottom on the bottom. Now, it, it, even today, you have to the, some of the rebbes today. If you go to Shlaim to Tish, um, they have the, some of the rebbes that's makoidim uh, from from uh, Lamai Lebakoidish that the, before Shabbos they put on a talus. They put on a talus before Shabbos, and they uh, and with the talus they go for Kabbalah Shabbos. 
sometimes say a toida, you know, between uh, between uh, Kabbalah Shabbos and Maidiv, like, you know, by Kilgavno. And some of these tzaddikim, they keep it on. Also by Suda Shabbos, they would sit by Suda Shabbos with the talus. So the Baruch used to sit by the Suda Shabbos with his talus. And uh, and uh, all of a sudden, when the fish went flying everywhere, a, you know, a big bowl of, you know, of that yoich went flying on his talus. <laughs> And uh, since he was not the type to enjoy such uh, theatrics, uh, they were wondering what's going to happen. And it was, it was he didn't even wipe it off. It was, it was as if he didn't notice. After Suda, one of us told me the master what, 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 uh, what happened. So he said, what should I tell you? I need to live the Rebani Shalom. I'll be mocked on that. How could I be mocked? I'll be upset. What? Because after Shabbos, Rebaruch told his family that he doesn't want them to ever, ever, ever wash his talus. If they want, they could wash it from the right, from the left, but the spot where there's the yoich has to stay forever. This talus went after he passed away. Went huh? <laughs> <laughs> this talus went Yerusha from different one tzaddik to another tzaddik, and the tilat ended up by the Mincha Saluza. <laughs> the Mincha Saluza, before he passed away, he said he wants to be buried with this talus. He wants to be buried with this talus. So the yoich, the talus with the yoich is right now with the Mincha Saluza. He wanted to dafke be buried with the talus. Interesting, Yemen Chasaluza passed away, uh, you know, what, two years before the war, that probably the talus would never get to us anyway. Probably that he, you know, Ruch Pacha knew that it's time for this talus to be buried. And that's the story, that's the story with, uh, with, with Rebbe Levi Yitzhak Why am I telling the story? You know the connection? No, I don't know. What happens in Mukhar, he wanted a love. Everyone they had knew Shas Balpeh. They couldn't differentiate. They decided to ask, where it says in Shekhanar about Tu Bishvat? Most people ask, where does it say about Tu Bishvat? It was Tu Bishvat, no such thing. It's an Arab more, like you indicated. And he was the only one who knew it, and that's how he got there. Uh, very nice. I heard it from uh -huh. <laughs> So let's read it a little inside. Uh, it's funny because I was doing a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, I was checking. A little research on the uh, because I, I read this line of Shulchan Aruch and it jumps out. Rosh Hashanah Leilonis Noigim Ashkenazim Laharbes B'mine Peres Shilonis. This is the Magen Avram. Magen Avram is very important place. Very every word he wrote is like you know. Ois get sail to Oisius. So uh, he writes Noigim Ashkenazim. I always thought that it was a very Svardiminik. It turns out that it's not it's not the case. Really, the Ashkenazim used to do uh, uh, had, not say Tachanon and celebrate Chamisha uh, also uh, Bishvat and Faket. By Svadim, it came later. But here is I hear a few beautiful stories about Chamisha and Bishvat. We'll get to in a second. But uh, here is I'm, I'm looking at different Minhagim, and I notice that in the original in all these uh, sources, like for example, the Magen Avram that brings it. From Tikkun Yisachar uh, is Noegim Laharbes the Mine Peiras Shalilonos the Peiras Shalilonos. Now, if I look at later, there is a Sefer Chem Besayomem, and he made a big thing out of it. He wrote a Sefer Priyat. That's how Tu B'Shvat became so big. I mean, I'm talking. I mean, obviously, today in Israel, Tu B'Shvat became you know. Like I, was, I mentioned Shabbos. I'm going to the UJA building, $25 million. They just opened the doors. Aknak, don't ask this. And uh, and and they have all the Yom Amtayv and Pashtetzach together with the Yom Matzmut and the Pesach is between the, the uh, two Bishvat. Mm -hmm. But uh, Afila, I mean, when it was uh, Yom Tif, so, um, so if you look, it's interesting that it's Mimine Pedesh Elilonis. But I'm looking tonight at certain minhagim that they start, they make a, a, a say there for Chamisha also Bishvat, and they also start with the Chita, and they make a Baita Mina Mazinus. So, Lechaida, the question is, they're right. Why is it in all the original minhagim that we have, going back from the Tikkun Yisachim that's brought in the Magan Avram, 
is noegim lahar bez bemine peda sheli lonois, only lonos, and why not um, the why not chito soira? So the truth is, it could, I mean, it makes sense because Rosh Hashanah li lonos. So so why what, what's the what's what is chita what is chita to do here? And even though we learned in the Gemara that Chita is also quasi Elon, but the Gemara says at the end, because uh, the, 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 what did other Mauritian ate from Elon that the, the fruits he's not supposed to eat? And one opinion is that it was really, uh, it was really Chita. But uh, so I'd, I'd, I'd like to read a little piece in the Alta Rebbe Shochanoruch, which is really in the Beis Yoyz of Asimon Reish Zayn. We say a bracha when we eat something, we make a, a, a after bracha. So the Beis Yosef says, what's the meaning of the bracha? Chesaron doesn't mean chesaron, what's you missing? The opposite. Chesaron means the opposite than what you're missing. If a person says, don't worry, I'm taking care of everything. You're my guest, I'm taking care of everything, don't worry about anything. Whatever people need in order to live. If they, they can't live without it. Bread, you can't live without bread. A person can't live without water. They could live without a pomegranate. They could live without candy. What does lahachius mean? Things that the Avisha created that should be for pleasure. Kagoa mine paidis. Kagoa mine paidis. Never mind the second shot for a moment. So that the, we make the bracha and we thank Hashem. So there's two different things. There is that the thing that they need. That the Abisha takes care of all our needs, our necessities, in order to be healthy. And then, that the Abisha also gave us stuff to give us pleasure in life, to give us pleasure in life. They say a story of a Rebbe, of Agita Yid, and someone came and they told him he's Nebuch, he's, he's only Vavian. He's only Vavian. He's poor. He doesn't have money. He's, the Rebbe has told him, and the host appetite. You have appetite to eat? He says, oh, what an appetite. <laughs> Who do I have an appetite? He says, that the Rebbe tells him, the Gita Yid tells him, you know, you're worth, you have no idea what you're worth. Dogeven Ayid just was uh, telling me his biggest problem. His wife, Nebach, is depressed. She has no appetite to eat. It's a He's paying doctors and doctors and doctors. And so, how can I get the appetite? You're a rich man. You have a good appetite. Okay, so uh, spiritually, there is the things that a person must have. A person can't live without learning Kitzah Shulchan Aruch, learning Shulchan Aruch, learning Chumash and Ashi. A yid can't be. What can the Jews that? That's Kehem Chayenu Vayrech Yemenu. This is our oxygen. We can't live without that. But uh, then there's things that give us extra pleasure. Extra pleasure. Fruits that give us extra pleasure. That Rizal said that until his days it was also legal things that are the sisre Torah, the hidden things of Torah was also to be megala. But the Rizal said now it's mitzvah legal mm-hmm. Then came along the Alter Rebbe and he said it not only a mitzvah it's a mechuyiv. He said that uh, he brought it the letter of the Balshemtiv. The Balshemtiv said that Emasek when he asked Mashiach when is he going to come, he said shefutzim and asachachutza when the pnimis of Torah will be spread in the chutza. So now it's a what, what, what happened? So really what happened is a very simple thing. That before the days of that, before the days of Hashem, to, if a Jew ate bread and water spiritually, he learned the Shulchan Aruch, he learned the Mishnah, and he learned the Gemara. And he was happy to do the 630 mitzvahs that Hashem told him to do. But then came along a generation, or later generation, where Jews had questions and challenges. And if you're just going to tell them to learn the Mishnah and the Talmud, and the kids of Shulchan Aruch, and the Shulchan Aruch, and the Nois HaKelem, but there's no pleasure. So the Abish said, you know what, it'll be a mitzvah, and then a chiyu, that we shouldn't only have bread. The bread of the Torah, chitah Torah, is 
the 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 things that we must know that the Shulchan Aruch, the Gemara, the Mishnah, the Ramam says in the last halacha in the four in the Soda in the fourth Pedic, that that's called Lechem Ubasar. And then there is Latayal Bapardis. What is a par? What's a pardis? A pardis is a place where there is fruits, where they grow fruits. In the Talmud, when you say a person is learning the depth of Torah, it's called L'tayel B'pardis. Arba Nichnus L'pardis. What's a pardis? A pardis of this fruits. What's the rem is? What's the connection with pardis and learning the depth of Torah? So we know because uh, Chassidus tells us there's Yenish of Torah, there's a wine, Nichnus Yain Yotzasoid, there is a Shem and Shabbat Torah, which is both are from the Shiva Saminim, which is Rosen Dei Rosen Dei Raisa. But Posh Pshat is because where do you get, there's a soda and there's a gan. Bossi Lagani, right? Lagani Lagnuni. There is a soda, is, a soda is a field where they grow beans, barley, where you grow wheat, uh, where the, the five minim, then that's what a person must have to live. But then there's boy in the Foshe Sabbath, is that's an apardis, latayal apardis. What do we know about pleasure? We know that the Gemara tells us a story in Daf Nun Vav in Gitin. Rabbi Yochanan uh, realized that uh, that Yishalayim was in big danger, and uh, he didn't feel that uh, it was the right time to to have war against the Romans. And we should just make nice with them. The problem was that there was Beryonim, then let whatever. So he said that they, they snuck out of Yishalayim. The Gemara tells the whole story, and they snuck as if they're doing a funeral for him. They snuck out. And uh, and and uh, and he meets uh, the head of of the Roman legions. So he tells him. He tells him. He tells him that. Uh, there wasn't Yochanan Zaka. Yochanan Zaka. He tells and he tells him. So he asks. Ah, he asks him. He, he said, "He's your your king." So he say, "Malka, Dashelos, Eslagavon, so on." And then the Gemara says an interesting thing. Gemara says. That he was while he was talking, he had one shoe on and one shoe off. One shoe was on and one shoe was off. And while they were uh, while and Rabbi Yochanan told him you're king, and then uh, while they were talking, there came a message from from Rome to say that he was uh, that he was appointed next king, designated to be the next king. He was thrilled. What happened was if one shoe was on, one shoe was off, and the shoe that was on he couldn't take off, and the shoe that was off he couldn't put on. So he said that you're from the wise people of the of the Jews, and the Jews are the wise people. Mm -hmm. So tell me what's going on over here. So Rabbi Yechonon said that the pasuk says Shmuel Toive to Dash and Nonsense. That when a person when a person has pleasure, pleasure makes that everything expands. So therefore, your bones expanded when you heard this unbelievable pleasurable thought <laughs> that you're going to be the next uh, that you're going to be the next king. So he said, "What should I do now?" So he said, "Bring one of the, one of your servants that you really hate, bring him in front of you, and uh, your, your, the swelling in your foot will go down a little bit, and you'll get you'll get you'll get your shoe off." But we see over here Advar Pel and this gemara. It's an unbelievable gemara. Uh, this we're talking not a child growing. Usually, when we're getting older, we're not. Right? When you go to the doctor, kids go to the doctor so excited to see they grew another inch, another inch. At some point. Uh, it's the other way around. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it doesn't go that way. You don't constantly grow. But this we constantly grow. But Begashmi at some point you would start to shrink. And uh, and here is a person that uh, he's a grown up, and all of a sudden that we say Shmua Toiva to Dash and Natsum, the Gemara tells it as a story that happened. So what is the Gemara trying to tell us? The Gemara is trying to tell us that it depends how, how we take Judaism. If we're if it's if we do it because it's uh, if it's uh, an obligation, so that's fine. But if we're doing it because it's a pleasure, that uh, the mitzvahs that we do we're doing it with a chayis and with a pleasure, it's a totally different thing. Uh, so the Bashemtiv came along, and before that the Arizal came along, and they saw that if you're just going to feed the Jews a diet of barley and wheat, of Mishnah and Talmud, Mila Kreisa, Bebosor, Balechem. It's not good enough. It has to be You have to put in things that are pleasure. Just like the Gashmis, the fruits of Eretz Yisrael not only gave pleasure. Yeah, I'll tell you an unbelievable story. An unbelievable story uh, from the, the Lala Vereb that uh, we, we know that uh, he was one of the very Chosheb Rebbes. 
in Eretz Yisrael, and before many Rebbe's moved to Eretz Yisrael, and uh, it was a time of the First World War, and it was uh, he made a he made a, a tish for to uh, uh, and Rachman uh, al people people were very sick and people were dying. No one came to Tish. No one. Zero. No one came to Tish. So uh, he sat there. A kid ran in, and he told uh, he told the Reb David of Lalov that uh, that uh, the whole family's sick and they're all dying. He's the only kid that's. Uh, so he gave him. So he gave him fruits from his tish. And he said, I'm guarantee if you take it home, the fruits from Tubishvat, and make sure all your family eats it and they're gonna live the Kacham. So uh, there's a special koyach in the fruits of Hamisha Sabishvat. And there's a, the remez of Hamisha Sabishvat is the fruits not so much in Chita Saoira. The remez of Hamisha Sabishvat is the harvest of Mine Perishal Ilonis. Because Hamisha Sabishvat is the idea. Of having pleasure, not just what's necessary. Chita soy is necessary. How could it be a Jew without oxygen? How could it be a Jew without uh, learning uh, Chumash, without learning Mishnayis? But then there is Lahachyos Behem Nefesh Kolchayv. That's a Pnigis Atoyda. Oh, for that, that's the, the special thing of Chamisha Asa Bishvat. No, Lachaim, Lachaim, that every one of us, um, that we should, uh, we should taste Milona Dechaya. And tonight we're doing it with Lunishmas, Mephraim Ben Chaim, and also Lunishmas, Nishmas, Shmuel David Ben Avrosher. The David should help every one of us, should be like an Elon, that we grow, and it should be Lahachias Ben, that the mitzvahs we do should be full of Chayis. Lachaim, Lachaim. Rabbi, you start, you said in the beginning that Ashkenazim do the brachon. The Benish Chai was living 180 years ago. It was very rich. He used to send before to Bishvat that they would get into Bishvat 100 and 100 Talmidech HaFamim in Israel. He used to send them Pladas. He did it for a lot of years. So Spaladim all the time. Sure. Let's not sing another song that... Uh, that Yochanan ben Zakai, right? I mean, the he, he, if he gave such a prediction, why did he only ask for Yavan and Fakam? That's a good Mark. question. You want to ask you on the Borka to Adena and Malakal and Very Prio Eight? Ah, yeah. Oh, man. Ah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Yeah, 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 
Uh, Alexa, make this a favorite photo. Uh, David, put yourself on mute. We can't hear the rabbi because of you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Pita is is the is the more Rambam boy. That's quite a it's it's a quite a pill to swallow. Yeah, Halavaya yeah. should be the Chita so you know. Yeah, exactly. No, but sometimes <laughs> with the Chita to get the appetite going for the Chita. Oh yeah, exactly. So what's the what's the Peiros? The Peiros is uh, is the Rosen the Rosen. It's the uh, secrets of the secrets. Oh, that's a different level, yeah, a right. different thing. It's a, yeah. uh, yeah. I don't. I, I don't. Even if it has rice, it has rice. Has rice in it. Apparently, it has, has rice in it. Never mind. Rice butter. Unless you think it's the other way around. Rabbi, what was the first way we were debating this? I don't your brother it's a beautiful it's a beautiful time and it, you know one of the thoughts about is you you don't see last night those that saw the gem video that wasn't the full Nakuda, but you don't see it. Uh, it's it's a zero degrees. It's uh, Baruch Hashem, it's forty degrees. But uh, you don't see any fruits yet. You don't see. So here is one of the thoughts that there's a letter that the Rebbe writes once. Uh, it's a beautiful letter where Moiden of Uchem, where the Rebbe writes to someone. A person says he feels he's stagnant in life. He's not feeling any growth. The Rebbe writes back to him. It's a beautiful thought that sometimes. You look at the tree, I was celebrating. But Ibamas, the Gemara tells us, the Mishnah tells us, Mabashamai, Basilo, that's where the sap really goes up in the tree. So the sap is going up in the tree, and the, but you don't see it yet. It takes a few months till you actually see fruits. Sometimes in life, this is what the Rebbe writes this person, you think you're stagnant, you think you're stagnant, but it's not true. Really, under the surface, there's a there's a tremendous amount of growth, and uh, it's just that the fruits come out at the end. At the very end is where the fruits come out. So l'chaim l'chaim, and our avoid the Hashem should be that way.
that we shouldn't cast should be stagnant, that we should grow and it should get fruits. And that's the whole thing of the Chamisha Sadashvat, Yidnak, you may eats kimiami, Yidnak considered like eights. And uh and and uh and the avoid avoid the sashem of eights. We spoke about this in the beginning of the month, that uh that uh there's four things. There is uh Sameachai Madabr and uh Tsaimeach is is the Midas. Always in Chsidis, Yabolot, Tsameach is the Midas. We spoke about this uh, a little bit uh, the other day that the um, step back a drop. Um, we talked, we spoke about that there has to be a fear factor against our enemies. That are hoikim and the kroivim. We spoke last, we spoke about this, this uh, last week, Sunday. That uh, in the Shida we spoke, Tipalai me Mosav Afachem. Why is it so important, Shabi Mosav Afachem? Why is it so important, the Shabi Mosav Afachem? So, um, one of the Musas for him, uh, I forget who it is, very, very harsh of a Musa Sefer, says that what's the Kroivim and the Rechoikim? He says the Kroivim, the, the enemies have to be scared of the Jews. That's a very important thing. We see it now, Rachman al that the Yidin and Rachman al were at seven Kedoshim and Shabbos. And what hurts, I'm, I'm reading about this, that the, in, in the Arab street, they were walking, they were giving out candy, and dancing, dancing uh-huh. and they were celebrating. Mm-hmm. It was, so why, so we have to, the, the, see, the, the most important thing is that we have to cause, the enemy has to be, we has to have pacha. Otherwise, that's, that, that's missing. There has to be pacha. There has to be that they, that they, when they hear on the news that Rahman al Islam, seven Yidin got killed, that they, they're so scared from the retaliation that they're shaking in the boots. Not that they're going outside and giving out candies and they're dancing. That they're now all of a sudden they're thinking, Rabban Shalom, there'll be another, maybe another, uh, another uh, hundred thousand illegal homes, Arab homes that will be demolished. Maybe there'll be another seven in the, in, the, in what they call the territories, another seven cities will be built up. They, but instead, they're going out. They're celebrating with candy because they're good. Life is good. The most important thing is that the enemy has to shake. It has to be shaking in the boots. So as the people name a of afachad. Rashi says a of afachad. What's the double ocean? One is on the kroivim and one is on the rechoik. Oh. So we spoke about this. I'm not going to go back to what we spent last Sunday about whatever. But there's a different shot that we didn't talk about last Sunday. Who are the enemies that are Choykim and Kroivim? So, uh, so there, there's a pshat that goes like this. There's two ty- There's two. There's the, 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 there is there is the seven the seven nations that we have to conquer. And but there is a the Eibushta says that Mashiach will come. We're going to get another Eretz Yisrael. Now now it's it's, nothing. it's a toothpick compared to what Eretz Yisrael really is. That's the land of the seven nations. But we don't. But the land of the ten nations. The, 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 and you'll read Chumash, it says Adanar Paros, until the Euphrates River it's just all it's supposed to be till the Euphrates River on the map that we have today we don't see that no. Eretz Yisrael should go till the Euphrates River no. that's, a, that's a big country no. we're talking about the land that's going till Nahar Paros it's, uh, we're, missing, we're missing out in Eretz Yisrael when Mashiach will come, we're going to get the seven nations plus the three nations Keni Knizi Vekadmoini Api What's the difference between the seven nations and the three nations? And why is it that the seven nations we can conquer now and the three nations only when Mashiach will come? Because the seven nations avoid the Samidus. And, uh, and the three nations avoid the Samoich. We don't know what avoid the Samoich means even. No. But there is such a thing as avoid the Samoich in that a person's whole mind is like rewired. I was mentioning the other day about this. You know, there's certain Sadiq alien that we trust it's not oil of Bedas that they would ever make a mistake. Why? So number one, because we say, it's it's like the story that the Noy de Behuda, the Noy de Behuda, when the first time he came to, to Prague, and, they, uh, and they, they asked him questions. And one Lamdan got up and asked him a question. He said, I got gotcha. you. So the Noy de Behuda said, this Shaila you cooked up, it was not Negeya. You asked as if in your kitchen, or this and that. It was not Negeya, Lamaisa. You just cooked up a story. He said because the Ebeshter gives siyata to 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 to, 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 to and, and, and to Apoisik. and uh, this question was not a relevant question. So that's number one. But the the, the Bemis is in our mind that certain Sadika Elyon we know that their their whole mind is trained to think the It's inconceivable that they would make a toss 
And what's Rats in HaKadosh Baruch Hu? For sure, they're Mechavan to the Rats in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In other words, not only that it's an, a divine intervention, that this is Nishayich, that they would make Chas V'Shalom a mistake in their Psaach, psa, obviously it could be Dei Levei 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 but 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 that that they they are being mechaven to one of the shivim ponim latoyda. Like uh, it was one of the chassidim said, okay, we shivim ponim. I don't want to be one of the shivim ocher latoyda. <laughs> so uh, so there are tzaddikah elyon that we know that okay could be just a dispute, but for sure they're from the shivim ponim latoyda. It's not shaykh that maybe they gave a pshat that's from, from the shivim ocher latoyda. Why? Because their mind is 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 so in tune with the rotzna kodesh baruch hu. It's not shayach that they should think different. And for us, we're not aspiring to be at that level where we, we, Mashiach will come. We're going to conquer the land of the three nations. But what are we aspiring to now? To Bishvat. Chamisha also Bishvat. Tzimeyach. Tzimeyach is Meramaz on Midas. Avoidus on Midas. The pure of our Midas. That our Midas should be, that our Midas should be pure Midas. Our Midas should be Midas Toivis. That are where our midas, our ava, our yida, our excitement, our chayis, is in kedusha. That that is the avoid that's attainable today. It's three nations of Mashiach will come. But what we could do today is to conquer the nations, the seven nations. And says one of the Mephoshim that that's the pshat between the enemies which are kroivim and achoikim. There is the enemies that we have to conquer. We must conquer them. Those are the Kroivim. These are the seven Midas. We have to work on our Midas. To say to rewire our brain, like those Tzadikim that we say that's not Shaykh, that they will ever think that for me and you, we're not, this is not our thing. This is not on the agenda for right now. Mashiach will come. That's what we're doing. But avoid the Hashem Midas, the Midas Toivas, the Gemara says that the Odom Eitz Asod, the Talmud Chochem Hogun. What does it mean, the Talmud Chochem Hogun? That he says the only the best Chidushim. That he could write Chidusha Reb Chaim double. Talmud Chacham Hagen means that he's there's a midas our Hagen, that he's a Yerushalayim and people has a pleasure to know him and he's making a kiddush Hashem in his dealings. So 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 that which is the avodas hamidos Talmud Chacham Hagen, that is what we celebrate on Chamisha Sabeshvat and that's the enemies that are kroivim that close to us and those are the ones we have to conquer. They shall help them that we should first conquer the ones that are kroivim. Those are close to us. Maybe she should help us that uh, we should conquer also ones that are achoykim mevius mashiach zetkainu. Lachaim lachaim. I'm a <laughs> But special Lachaim from one from one of the Mishtatim in Ashir that David Shalfin should be gesund. Ramachi Borov Shasagidov. Brothers here. Pinchas Ben Rina. Terrific, terrific Mishtatim in Ashir. He's not coming lately, but he's on Zoom. He comes on Zoom. And you know, I used to learn with your brother. 
I oh, 25 years ago. And then I remember I called him. I said, I'm going to the, to the Bronx. He said, oh, what's going to happen? We're not going to learn. I said, I'm sorry. We're going, we're going, we're, yeah. And then 10, 10 years went by. We never had any connection. And one of the first shiurim I gave here, and your brother just walked in. Wow. I, he, it's not like we had any connection. Hmm. Because the Abish to make, if the Neshamas have a connection, right. they have to connect. Wow. And, your, and your brother walked in here and I said, wow, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, we have a very special member uh, that that is Mishtatev and Ashurim, Choshev Atamet Chochem, Pinky Shweki. His brother is here. His brother is going to tell a uh, uh, to tell the COVID uh, to Bishvat or tell a story with the Rebbe. Chaim. 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 So, so, so many. Chaim. Chaim. Yeah, but many thousands. Idea. Idea. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I saw with a happy story with the Rebbe, and then I thought with, with, with the crazy story. Yeah. So I remember I was davening, uh, I took the day off, I was on 770, and uh, I was davening like 3 o'clock chakras in the afternoon, or like one of the guys. And all of a sudden, in the summer, and they announced, they said, the Rebbe's giving nickels. <laughs> I said to myself, I'm not going to go because it's, I feel embarrassed to go to the Rebbe Palace and fill him 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm not going. <laughs> it's not going to happen. You know, I'm serene. I'm not doing it. So then uh, 15 minutes later, they announced again, the Rebbe's giving nickels, and I said, I'm definitely not going. <laughs> I don't care what the like 20 minutes later, they said, last call. The Rebbe's giving nickels, last call. I said, you know what? I'm going to go have a plan. So I go there in front of me, 20 guys house in the filling. Nobody cares. I say, so I go to the, not to go to the Rebbe. I take my towels and completely cover my head and I put out my hand. <laughs> so I'm waiting five seconds, 10 seconds. Rebbe's not giving me the nickel. 15 seconds. Rebbe's not giving me the nickel. And then they start screaming. Rebbe Grona is screaming. Rebbe Klein is screaming. <laughs> Zirkin is about to tear me in half. And all the uh, maskirim are yelling, what, what's holding up the line? So I'm saying to myself, Rebbe, just give me the nickel, let me go. I don't, I'm, I don't want you to see me, I'm diving so late. So now we're at 20 seconds. <laughs> Rebbe's not giving me the nickel, I'm just standing there like this. And finally I said, okay, it's not nice, I'm playing chicken with the Rebbe, it's not nice. So I opened my towels and he gave me the nickel. <laughs> <laughs> so another story. You really said that to Rebbe? I didn't say nothing to the Rebbe. Oh, you didn't say anything. work. Oh. He was thinking that. And then there was another story, which was very weird. I don't know if I want to creep people out, but um, like years ago, I was in, so, so I'm like engaged to, to a girl and finally decided to, to get married. And this is years ago. I remember. Remember the story? So uh, we, wrote, we wrote to the Rebbe and went to Rabbi Groner. Rabbi Groner says, oh, David Chucky, because I had a few run-ins with Rabbi Groner already. <laughs> so he knows who I am. You know, it's crazy ballet chupa from uh, crazy Syrian guy from Flappus, from Lubavitch. <laughs> so, oh, David Shwaki, how are you? So great, how are you? So, oh, you mazel tov. So we send them the letter. And we wait a day and no answer. I go back to Rabbi Groner. And I said, any answer? He looked at me and he said, I don't remember giving me a letter. Now I know it's, it's going to be crazy because he, he said that. Already he doesn't know who I am. He forgot who I am. It says, write again. So I wrote again. Wait another day, no answer. <laughs> So I go back again, it says write again, I write again. And then we go, one time write again, no answer. And then he says, did you put, the, did you sign it? Did you and the caller signed it. I go, no, we'll sign this one. No answer. So there's six time. Baby says, Baby Grana says, did you put a sadaka in? I go, no. So put sadaka in. <laughs> Gave him the letter. <laughs> Next day, go to Rabbi Grana. He says, the Rebbe has an answer for you. I said, oh, cool. He says, what? He says, check her cat. Okay. Oh, so check your what? Check her cat. He was married before. Oh. So, Rabbi Gona says, go to Rabbi Gorelick. Rabbi Malo, they're going to handle it. Said, okay. So, go to Rabbi Gorelick. So who's, who's the girl? Where's she from? Who's the rabbi? Uh, so, he said, okay. We'll get in touch with him. We'll get in touch with you. A few days go by. And he said, oh, her rabbi is going to Israel. Uh, we got to wait uh, two weeks. Mm -hmm. Wait two weeks. Two weeks later, comes back and calls me up and says, "Oh yeah, we, we got to get." He said, "So what does it say?" He gets hundred percent kosher. He says, "I said great, so I'm getting married, right?" He says, "No, you're not getting married." I go, "Why?" 
So if the Rebbe does something like this, it means something. Again, but gets gets coached and said, the Rebbe has something in his mind. We don't know what it is. We bring your collar here every night to the base then, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, nine o'clock. Okay. I bring a Monday night. <coughs> I go there. I pick her up. She comes back. She says, what's going on? She goes, ask me a lot of questions. Take a Tuesday. Comes back. What's going on? They ask, they ask me a lot of questions. Take a Wednesday. She comes back. She's crying. I go, what's going on? She says, they keep asking me the same questions. Keep answering the same questions. What do they want from me? She's crying. So I told Rabbi Gorelick and I said, Rabbi Gorelick, this is crazy. Rabbi, Rabbi said, check the get the get closer. Now, you, now you're making her cry. Said, I don't need you guys. I'll go to Flatbush. I'll get married there. Well, you're making me crazy here. I don't need you guys. I'll, I'm Syrian. I'll go to the Syrian community and get married. I don't need to be here in Chabad. So he says, give us one more night. I said, okay. So she comes back. And, What's going on? She's quiet. Take, take me home. I go Rabbi Grelk and he says, now we know why the Rebbe says, check her get. What do you mean? She's still married. What do you mean? She's still married. She went with her husband after the get, so the Rebbe saved you from Mamzerus. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, that's one story. Can I make Lachaim? Again? Yeah. I'm Lachaim. It's not a story. That is a crazy story. Wow. True story. I remember when you told me the story. Yeah, so how was the get coach? She went back to me now. She didn't want to go back for a few months later, I asked Rebbe if I should go back to my ex wife. And I got the answer the next day. Oh, they got remarried? Her, only her, and nobody else. But that's that's for next year. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Next year. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll wrap up the Fabrengen. We'll have Maidim, Ebishal Helfen, the Mitzvah Shem, that uh, we should be, that we should pay this. We learned the pay this. We learned this morning in my pay that pay this a mitzvah. And, um, and uh, like we learned this morning, that uh, what happens. Is that there is a simple formula? Wonderful. That there's a simple formula. The Medrash says that sometimes we're lacking mitzvahs. So what do we do then? So the simple the Abisha says that the eitzah is when the yidn are baguda achas. If we're baguda achas, zem mechaper al zeh. So even if 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 we're not, but we're we're baguda achas, baguda achas. Uh, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. If you have a forest. The trees grow very nicely. You have one little tree. You have a forest. All the trees they straighten each other out. Mm. So we should be baguda achas and they shall help and that we should taka have good paydas. In other words, nachas for the children, make good shaduchim for the children. Amen. And taka should be in the last few minutes of golus l'chol bnei yisrael or bnei shmoisam that there should be good parnos for all the yidden should be achter b'chesed. And then just that's just a couple of minutes. And the mitzvah Shem, we should go out of the Golos. Amen. 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 Amen.